morning, everyone. Um, I am Mary Frances Gallagher. I'm the deputy head teacher at Fairhill School in Glasgow and also one of the contributory teachers for Scottish Online Lessons. First of all, I want to give you a little bit of background to Scottish Online Lessons, which we now affectionately uh, know as SOL. Um, Scottish Online Lessons was really born out of lockdown. During lockdown, everyone was taught at home. Um, and teachers had to adapt <coughs> to a remote teaching model. Teachers at Fernhill School had to adapt to a remote teaching model because children needed to be taught and it was an extensive period of time and they had to produce lessons and material which could be used successfully at home to continue to move them forward in their learning. So not just to revise things that they had already done but to keep moving forward. At that time, because we had a partnership with uh, UTeach and we had worked with them before, we decided to work partner with them to see if we could produce something that could be used as a home learning tool, primarily at that time for teachers who were teaching um, during lockdown um, and something that would be robust and progressive for the learners. So we created a suite of lessons. Um, the lessons are all created by qualified school teachers. So the primary one lessons I created, the primary two lessons were created by the primary two teacher and so on. And then in the high school, they were, they were all created by subject specialists for the high school. So the lessons were created and they are delivered by qualified teachers. So they are delivered in a way that hopefully replicates as as well as can possibly be replicated a classroom setting and they cover primary one all the way through to higher to, to to let you see what the cost of this is because sometimes people are a little bit um you know they can't see past what's happening because they're nervous about what this thing costs it's a very low cost package the annual subscription is £50 per sector, so if you want primary lessons, it's £50 per year, or secondary lessons, £50 per year. That can also be paid monthly, if that's a preferred way of, of payment. And also because we recognise that many learners who have difficulty accessing a, a, a regular um, platform or, or, or method of learning, may well be in S2, but still working at a primary six le level, or, 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 or vice versa, they may well be in, S, uh, in, in primary but want to be challenged uh, further in their learning. We can look at custom pricing where you need a bridging platform between the two. So don't be, don't be put off by that thinking, well, that's not going to work for me because I'll need to buy two. That's not going to be the case. For the purpose of just aligning you to the way the lessons are structured, um, Curriculum for Excellence, you will more than likely be as familiar as I am because everyone in this room is an educator, in fact. Um, the early level runs from age three to primary one. Then we have first, second, third and fourth level, and then the senior phase. The lessons have been designed to work with these levels. And what you often find is just because your child is chronologically in primary three doesn't mean that their learning is at primary three. We've structured this programme to allow people to use it as flexibly as it is required by them and their children. The primary curriculum covers literacy and numeracy. Those are the key elements of the curriculum. Now, I know that we do have social subjects in primary, um, but the, the platform at the moment is, is looking specifically at the literacy and numeracy. And again, these can be used flexibly. They, if your child prefers literacy, they can go to town on the literacy lessons, or if they prefer numeracy, they can use the numeracy lessons. So there's, there's great aspect of choice in the lessons. They can choose which lessons they want to do rather than being a slave to what the teacher wants them to do. For secondary, it covers all of the science subjects. It covers English and maths and all of the social subjects. Again, the menu, which we will see later when we actually look at the website, the menu is driven and developed in such a way that they can choose 
where they would like their learning to go on that particular day. So if, a, if you do have difficulty with encouraging your child to do science or to do maths or to do language, and sometimes there's that element of forcing them to do it because you think that's the right thing to do, but you don't get the results that you were hoping to get, this allows them the element of choice. So they can choose which subjects they would like to study that particular day. They can also choose how long they want to study for that particular day or in that particular section of the day. So there's a lot of choice and you'll see that as we go further through the presentation. The lessons have all been de developed, as I've said, primary one to higher. In addition to the lessons, there's a full suite of assessments have been created. Now, those assessments allow you to establish a level for your child. Your child may be 10, but they may yet have learned the mechanics of reading and writing. So you would want to know, where would I start my child? So the assessments can be done. We always advise that the assessments are done ahead of engaging with a particular level. So for example, you may believe that your child is operating at a primary six level. Before putting them onto the primary six lessons, you can do the end of year assessment for primary five. And the assessments are all split into subject areas. So you can choose the, le the, the area that you want to assess before moving on to the next level. Go back, uh, Zoe, thanks. Uh, the lessons are all delivered by a teacher as they would be in class. As close as they can be to how a teacher would deliver them in class, they're all narrated so the audio is there along with the description of what is being taught so that anyone who prefers to learn um, from a, 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 a sound level, it, it's accommodating them as well. But they are very visual. Also, the, there's lots of engaging um, things going on. They're all voiced over with clear explanation and there is a standard layout from primary one all the way through to higher. So when a child becomes familiar with the lessons, they know when they see this pause sign, they know they're going to be asked to stop and do something on the lesson. When they see the pencil sign, they know they're going to be asked to, read, to write something down. So there's an element of preparation there. When I see this on the slide, I know that I'm going to have to pause this lesson. I know that I'm going to have to write something down so they can be ready for that task. And the little light bulb tells them there's something important on this page that I should remember. So um, in the little page on the side, there's a light bulb and it may have a little bit of instruction or it may have a little bit of um, understanding um, information that they should commit to memory. The layout is very simple. It's all done in these kind of muted tones and there are examples throughout the lessons. When the teacher is explaining a concept, that will be followed up with an example. And it's very, it's different to sometimes when we've spoken to people, they've been using other learning resources. The, the learning resources that you use primarily to check understanding of a topic, things that you can get maybe on Twinkle, you can get them on primary teaching resources. They will check a child's understanding of something, but this teaches the child. This is, this is what the, the difference with this platform is it aims to teach the child rather than to check if they know something because they can't know it unless they've been taught it. The exercises are built into each lesson and that ensures that the learner has an understanding. They can stop the lesson and play it all over again. And they can't do that in school. They can't ask the teacher, can you go right back over all of that? Because I really want to hear it again. They can hear it as many times as they like. They can take control of their learning by pausing it when they need a break. You know, I've, I've listened to this for enough. I want to pause it and I'll come back to it in 30 minutes. They can do that with these lessons. The benefits of the lessons, some people are taught fully at home. Other people tend to have a hybrid between home and school because they can maybe cope with a few days at school and the rest of their time is at home. These lessons can be used in class or at home. So if your child is learning using Scottish online lessons at home, 
you could be speaking to the school to say when they do attend school we have established their level they have been working through these lessons at home can they continue to work through these lessons in school that provides familiarity it provides that safe environment where they understand the lessons and the way that they're being delivered and it's co it provides continuity between their home learning and their school learning. Conversely, they may be learning at home fully and therefore they would work through these lessons at their own pace. They provide an opportunity for learners wherever they're being taught to access national qualifications because the lessons are being, they have been created and they are by teachers and they are fully aligned to the Scottish curriculum. So the, the lessons lead you to a destination and if your child is interested in being presented for national qualifications, this platform prepares them for that. They support, they support many types of learners. They support learners with no barriers um, to their learning, but they also support learners who have barriers um, people with autism, dyslexia, dyscalculia and those who just find traditional learning difficult because for many and varied reasons lots of people find traditional learning difficult and a teacher does have a very difficult job in terms of trying to teach 33 children something and hitting every single one of their learning styles in the process of doing so. This package allows you to have an environment which hopefully works for you. It's a predictable learning environment and that for many users can be the thing that really makes learning difficult. I don't know what's going to happen next. I am too distracted by other things that are going on around me. There's, there's stress in the environment that you've put me in here so I can't learn. In their own environment, these barriers are taken away. There's an opportunity for overlearning. Many of us, myself included, like to overlearn things. You know, if it's something that you don't quite get on the first attempt, if you go over it and over it and over it, you'll get there. Teachers have a finite amount of time to, to get that concept delivered, and they may well be able to go over it once, but you'll really very rarely get a teacher to go over it again and again and again. With the lessons, you can Rewind and go back over. Rewind, go back over it as many times as you like. You can take control of your own learning by pausing. Um, quite often, people, when they are told to do something, find that very difficult. But if I choose to do it, I'm actually much more engaged already and I'm absolutely much more open to learning and much more likely to learn something. So that ability is there. And as a result, it builds confidence. When a child can't, when a child is trying to learn and they, find, they feel that they can't learn something, their confidence is knocked. When your confidence is knocked, you can't layer anything else on top. So it's, a, it's an ever decreasing cycle of, of, of not making progress in your learning. Using these lessons can help your ch child to build the confidence that they need to make the progress that they need to make. It can be used in the learner's safe space at home. Um, the, the, they can download the lessons so they don't even need to have internet. The lessons can be downloaded with the internet and used without internet and used in that space where they feel safe and comfortable and confident to learn. They can choose the subjects they want to learn and the days that they are equipped to do so. Not everybody can learn every single day of the week and not everybody learns Monday to Friday. Some people might prefer to learn on a Saturday. Some people might prefer to learn in the evening. So these lessons are constructed in a way that gives you back that control of when and what you learn. We, I've spoken about that a little bit before, but where a child is attending school on a part-time basis, they can have that continuity in their learning by using the platform with the school's permission at home and in school. There's nothing, there would be nothing to stop a teacher, I am a teacher, and there would be nothing to stop someone being in my class and being hooked up to Scottish online lessons and being able to ask me for support rather than asking you for support if they need it. And that, as a teacher, I would feel is a much more appropriate learning 
environment for that child than them having to do what I'm doing with the class that day because it may not be suitable for them. So we're going to have a look at the website because obviously I can speak here forever and then you still don't know what this thing looks like. Um, we'll look at the assessments first and the assessments show you what you would do prior to engaging with the lesson platform. So what you can see is when you go onto the website at first, um, the first thing that you're asked to do, you can go on to the assessments. If you scroll up a little bit, Zoe, um, from primary four onwards, we have created assessments to allow you to check the level that your child would be, would be working at. And, the, and these assessments continue for secondary. So for example, if I were to go to the assessment, yeah, if we just click back to there. So if I go here, so this is primary seven, end of unit assessment. So if you felt, if your child was an S1 or S2, but you wanted to check that they had the, the fundamental principles, skills and knowledge of a primary syllabus in education, you would go here and you can see here, there's a full suite of assessment information. Now, if your child, your child may say to you, oh, I really don't understand fractions. So you would, you might start at the primary seven fractions and they don't do particularly well. So you would then go back to the primary six fractions and see how they do there. And you can keep going back until you find the level that they have absorbed that information. Once you find the level, you would then go to the primary, if, it, if you find that the level is primary four, you would go to the primary five fractions, you would work your way through them, take the assessment, go to the primary six, and so on. So you're, you're building up the foundations of their learning before moving them to a different platform. And then if we jump to the actual lessons, so you can see here, the lessons are all organized by sectors. So if you wanted primary, you can go to primary seven, if we went to primary seven, and this will bring up the lessons. This lesson here, this is fine, Ezra, I can use that lesson as an example. Okay. Uh, yep, so, so it splits then literacy and numeracy. And then if we scroll down and we come to, I'm just going to stick with fractions because we've been talking about fractions. Um, so if we go here to equivalent fractions and you can see the lesson comes up. If we pause there, the lesson comes up, this is how it would appear on your child's screen. And they would click the play button and before, when they click that play button, it's going to come to them as a video. And therefore, everything that they need to know is now going to be told to them by the teacher. So if you click that, Zoe. Um, now, I don't know, have we got... Did Hello, we it's Mr. Murphy here different. from Scottish Online Lessons. And this maths lesson today is going to look at equivalent fractions, decimal fractions and percentages. So the learning intention is to understand equivalent fractions, decimal fractions and percentages. So we're going to look a little bit at these today. The success criteria is I can label the numerator and denominator. I can find equivalent fractions. I can convert tenths to decimal fractions. I can convert hundreds to decimal fractions. And lastly, I can calculate fractions as a percentage. So let's move on with this lesson and find out a bit more. So if you could pause there. The now before we get started. Yeah. So on that first slide, it's, it's pre preparing the child for what they're going to learn. So it's creating the scene, the learning environment. What you're going to learn today is equivalent fractions, decimals and percentages. And it's also telling the learner, by the end of this lesson, here is what you will know. And oftentimes that can be lost in a big lesson, in a big learning environment, and the child has no idea what they're about to learn. So there's already a bit of scene setting going on there. This is what you're going to learn before it moves on to the actual lesson. So if you move on now, Zoe, you'll see how it is. Eight fractions it, as a percentage. So let's move on with this lesson find out a bit more. Now before we get started, I'm going to do a quick fractions recap on what you should know already. So a fraction represents part of a whole. And below there you can see a shape that is split into four parts. 
and three of them are shaded. This is three quarters, three out of four parts. So the numerator is the number on the top of the fraction, and this is the amount of parts of the whole that are being considered. And the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, is the number of parts the whole has been split into. So that fraction there has been split into four parts, and there's three parts shaded. I'd like you to complete this starter task. Name the fractions that are shaded. So what then happens is, so there's been an element of teaching that have explained that the, the denominator is the number of parts that the, the whole has been split into, and the numerator is the number of parts that are shaded. And then this part here allows the learner to do something. So you can see here that they have to pause and they have to do a little bit of work. And the work that they are going to do there is to, to decide to work out on their own piece of paper what is going to happen, what, what this is as a fraction, what this is, this, this, this and this. And that can be done as many times as they like. So at the end of them doing the activity, it will then ask them to restart their, their, their programme and it will give them the answers and they can self-correct so they will be able to see if they get it right. So if you play that um, forward, Zoe. No, the first one's been done for you, it's three quarters. So remember, the number on the top is the amount of parts shaded, the number on the bottom is the amount of parts altogether. Pause the lesson now and complete this task. So we won't pause, we'll just... And here are the answers. So the first one was three quarters, the next shape, the circle, is five eighths, the next shape, the yellow one, is six tenths are shaded, the triangle is one half of that triangle, then the bottom left, all six parts of that shape are shaded, so that's six sixths, but that could also be known as one whole when everything's shaded. The next circle is eleven sixteenths, and lastly, one twelfth. Okay, so if we just pause there because I don't want to teach you all fractions today, that was not the intention. However, if you enjoyed it, you know where to look. Um, so that lesson continues to look at equivalent fractions and it talks about the fact that three sixths is the same as one half and it's the same as 50% and it links all of that learning together and it continues to recap and, and build and recap and build as it goes on and then at the end there is an assessment that you can take which allows you to see if your learning has been successful and if it hasn't you go back over the lesson, it's as simple as that. So, uh, on the other side, on the secondary side, we have a similar layout. So the, the layout here, you can see, first of all, j just leave this here, Zoe, we should be able to play it from here, mm -hmm. that you can see immediately what, what um, strikes you is, it looks the same. So whether I was doing primary four fractions, oh, no. it, it looks the same, the same font is used, the same symbols are used, uh, the narration has been done in a standard fashion. So once you become familiar with this learning environment, it's a repeat, repeat, repeat type of process. Just play that, Zoe, thanks. This BGE reading skills lesson on studying poetry. In today's lesson, you'll learn how to understand the structure and language of poems. And by the end, you should be able to identify the features that make a poem a poem, and you'll be able to confidently discuss the language and structure of poetry. How to read this presentation. The pencil icon on the screen means that you should take a note of the information on the slide. Remember, keep your notes nice and clear and organised so that you can refer back to them in the future when you revise. When a slide. So this one here is explaining to the learner what they're going to need and what all these symbols look like. So again, another element of preparation for accessing this lesson. So if you just scroll along, Zoe, just to see if you're listening to all of that. At the very bottom of your pyramid. And this will help you to start thinking about what is poetry and what you define poetry and poems as. So pause the presentation, write down your descriptions now, and then we'll move on. Just, uh, if you just let it run and we'll see what happens next. As you already know, in today's lesson we're going to be looking at how to describe and discuss poetry. And that means there are going to be a number of poetic terms to learn. These techniques might sound complicated and confusing at first. Some of them have really long and complex sounding names, but they're actually quite simple 
And in fact, the name is usually the trickiest part. So when looking at new words and terms, it's important not to be turned off by a complicated name, which English is full of, unfortunately. A very simple object or idea can... And again, you can see that they're bringing the learner on board by explaining to them that everyone finds these, con these, these names very complicated and, and it, it often prevents you from going any further. Try to forget about that. Try not to be bogged down by that and, and carry on with the learning in a way that's going to allow you to access it. actually have a very complicated name. So focus on the idea, not on the name, especially if the name is really complicated. The first poetic technique we're going to look at is the use of sound effects in poetry. So you, you may or may not know, but poetry is... So this is basically the, the example, there's a worked example there, the, 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 the drum is there and she's asking them to think of sounds that that conjures up, boom, drrr, psh, clanging, that kind of thing. And then it moves on to the next page, if we play that again. It's really meant to be read aloud and heard by an audience, rather than just read from a page. So your task is to look at the pictures on the following slide and write down a list of all the sounds that you can hear when you look at it. You don't need to worry about spelling. In fact, if you'd like to, you can even invent some words to describe the sounds. There's one below here that you can see on the screen. So for example, boom and rustle may be words that you've heard before, but and squish are just made up words that I think sound in my head when I see this image. So you feel free to make up any words you want to. Here are the four pictures if you, you to invent. Zoe. And you can imagine, as you're listening to this, you can imagine that that teacher is actually sitting with you because that's exactly how that teacher would deliver that English lesson. She would be showing pictures on the screen, she would be talking over them, and she would be asking the people in the class on their notepad to scribble down the sounds that that conjures up. So although you're learning at home, you have the advantage of having your teacher there with you. And that teacher has been taught how to deliver that piece of learning. And that's what makes this quite unique as a platform for learning is that the teacher is actually there with you. So I think if we jump back to the, the, the presentation, anyone who wants to see more of this, there is a free trial which you can access and you can play around with till your heart's content. Um, but that was just to give you a flavour of what it looks like because sometimes it's, it's difficult to portray that when you're just going through a slide presentation. So the one day free trial, Everyone can sign up for that, um, go home, play around with it, um, see what you think. And obviously there will be ways of using this product that will best suit every child in this room, but it won't always be the same way. So you would, as a parent, you would know what would be the best way to use this product to suit your child. Um, the assessment is there prior to engaging in a particular stage. It's very easy to navigate. Um, navigating from primary one all the way through to primary seven there's a standard format if you're in primary five that doesn't mean that you have to do the primary five lessons you can do primary one lessons that's why we bundled them together in that way because many resources come discreetly you buy a primary one resource you buy a primary two resource and so on now the, the, the tendency there is that if you're in primary three, you're going to buy the primary three lesson, but you may not be yet ready to access them. And there are huge gaps in your learning. Building the product in this way allows people to go backwards and go forwards, depending on their own skills and knowledge. The secondary levels are all um, clearly indexed. So there's, you go into a subject and then you go into a stage. We were looking at an S1, S2, curriculum there but they also go to national five and then to higher and again the topics have been chosen to align perfectly with the the topics that would be delivered in class if you were preparing a class of students for their national five exam or for their higher exam the topics can be covered as many times as required and all of the follow-on work is clearly signposted for the learner, so they know what's coming and, and it's all explained to them really clearly. If they miss an instruction, they don't need to be embarrassed by putting their hand up, they simply rewind the video and they get the instruction again. 
Some of the feedback that we've had, obviously this isn't the first time that we've delivered this presentation to people and um, in our audiences there have been people, parents of children who have difficulty accessing a traditional learning curriculum. Um, some of the feedback we've had is that the, ch the, the children were able to use the platform independently and enjoyed being in control. That control it can quite often be very important to a learner. They felt that that was very, very important, that they were in control of their learning and of the time that they were spending learning. Um, sometimes parents helped by rephrasing what was being said, so again, that would depend very much on your own child. Some children can, can listen and understand other children will need that to be rephrased for them in a way that's going to suit them. And some parents did say that, that that was something that they did. But they did feel that the overhead of doing that was far less than trying to teach them everything from scratch. Some people said they used the lessons three days per week with the other two be days being used for wellbeing activities and that that was a very important thing for them. Others said that concentrating in maths and language for primary has really simplified the learning process because their child wasn't interested in, in drawing the Titanic or, or sticking crepe paper onto the Titanic, but they really, really liked doing literacy and numeracy activities. So being able to give that to them was a real bonus. Um, it also facilitated much greater progress in their learning and as a result, much more confidence in their learning. Others have said that they had been using Twinkle and while it was a great resource, it doesn't teach them anything. So it allows you to check if they've learned what you wanted them to learn, but it didn't actually teach them and Saul provided the teacher in the room. Others said they had chosen the key secondary subject to use with their child because they felt that was less stressful than having nine subjects to teach. They narrowed it down, they used subjects that they were interested in or had an ability for. Um, and the others had said that they found it was important to go through the lesson, at least one of the lessons with the child to navigate them, to orient them on what the lesson was doing, what the pause sign means, what they're going to be asked to do. Um, and they found this was important. But after they had done that, they were able to work on their own. We're going to chat after this and we're going to have an opportunity for questions. But there is also a formal process that you can use if you don't want to ask questions here. There is a support um, department within the company, info at scottishonlinelessons.com. You've all got a little card on your seat and that's got those contact details there. And the website address is there. If you have questions that are unique to you and you don't want to share in this forum, ask them to the, 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 the contact um, group and they will come back to you contact group is supported by teachers as well so some of the questions that come to us are actually academic questions and they get answered by the teachers who are working um, in this um, initiative.